Hey everyone, happy Friday. It is Friday night with beef. We're hanging out in Grill Stadium. Uh, and Grill Stadium's been getting quite the workout today because we were uh, doing some awesome stuff for the Colorado Beef Council this morning back here on Grill Stadium. So we got it all cleaned up, dialed in, and we are back here and ready for another fantastic night. Today, super easy recipe. And I'll tell you, the last couple weeks, uh, the recipes have been awesome, very versatile. So you can swap steaks, you can swap cuts, uh, you can use it from a fresh standpoint, you could do the cook once, eat twice. The versatility has been there right from the get-go, which has been fantastic. Tonight, uh, super versatile again, because again, you can switch steaks. You can use a different cut if you want, uh, but also very easy, right? The last few weeks, we've also gotten these meals done in 15 or 20 minutes. So this is something nice that you can do that's fast, that the kids are gonna love. And guess what? It is like steak, vegetables, and potatoes all on one kebab um, and definitely a fantastic meal. So, hey, uh, Annie is with us tonight, again, as always. She is the camera operator that does a fantastic job keeping us on track. Come on in, dear. Show them what we got. Tonight, we are talking beef steak and potato kebabs. It does not get any better than this. Speaking of this, you can head to cobeef.com. That's cobeef.com. It's Colorado Beef Council website. Uh, right up on the top, there's a little tab called cooking. Click on that. That will bring you to all the recipes we've done. This is week, hold on. What are we at? Week 10, 12? Is it that many? This is week 10. Wow. So we're going to have 10 recipes up there, uh, plus some other cool information for you. So you can go to uh, cobeef.com, click on cooking tab. That'll bring up all of our recipes. Plus, it'll bring up the beef locator to show you where you can get some amazing Colorado beef that our ranchers and producers work so hard to get done. So don't forget to check in. Tell us where you're watching from. Uh, leave your questions and leave your comments down below because we want to answer them and get you all dialed in. Hey, we're only two weeks away from Father's Day, well, this weekend and next weekend. So this is a good primer for something you may want to try for dad. So kids, pay attention. Uh, and next week, we're going to do, uh, what are we doing next week? Beef empanada. So next week, we're actually going to be in the kitchen. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I got some really cool empanada presses uh, that I'm excited to show you. So we're going to make beef empanadas uh, next week. So you ready to do this, Ann? I am. All right. So let us uh, come on in here real quick. We'll show you what we've got. So we're starting off with some beautiful top sirloin. I'll tell you what, I love uh, the texture of top sirloin. I think it's just fantastic. It eats so nice. Uh, it just has a really good texture to it, and it is perfect for uh, kebab time. If, let's say you're looking for a little more fat, right? These tend to be a little bit leaner. If you're looking for a little more fat, totally could go with ribeye. Uh, you could go with filet or any of that. And Anyone we need to say hi to who's checking in so far? Uh, Todd Ingley, Kate Schultz, I and like Matt it. Mazone are watching. Matt Mazone, how are you? How is New York? Mr. Todd Ingley, how are you? And Kate is uh, the dietitian for Colorado Beef Council, so we're excited to have her. All right, so first thing we're going to do, let me walk you through a little bit of the ingredients, right? Here we go. So one of the cheats, I don't call this a cheat, I call it more of a hack. Like, here's your dinner hack is a Ziploc bag. Put a little bit of water in there and then microwave these guys for about seven minutes. And look at this. They're nice and soft now. Watch me squish it. See how soft it is? Squishy. Nice and soft and ready to go uh, so that we can get into kebabs a lot faster. So we need some red potatoes, squash. Um, what we did with the zucchini and yellow squash, you'll see here. Look at that. We cut them into nice little discs. It's like magic. What, from I know, right? From there to, to there. Over here. Shazam. And what we're trying to do is make sure everything is about the same size uh, because we want all of this to cook equally. So making sure it's all the same size will definitely do that. Questions? Uh, no questions, but Penny is joining us from Highlands Ranch. Hello, Penny from Highlands Kelly, Ranch. Andy Rao is on. Very nice. Hello, everyone. Andy Rao, I will reply back to your text a little bit later. So uh, we have some distinguished visitors coming in this weekend that we might have to go hang out with for a little bit. All right, look at this. So, so I cut this guy down. I'm not worried about any of that fat, you guys. Fat's going to add flavor. It's going to All right, get these guys set. And I want to show you one little seasoning secret I have here for the top sirloin steaks. So, anybody else we need to say hi to? Anyone checking in? Not yet. New York just had himself a birthday. Happy birthday, Matt. I didn't get to see pictures. It's 27. 27, I think 27, yep. I didn't get to see pictures of the cake, but I bet it was pretty solid because they're a good, good group of folks out there. And I'm sure I've mentioned it a hundred times, Ann, but the pizza place next to 
the store in Brooklyn is um, pretty fantastic as well. Maybe we could so go there someday. We could. We definitely could. All right. So here we go. A little bit of kebab action. Got the meat cut up. What I'm going to do real quick, real quick, is... While you're doing that, I'm going to say hello to Mark Donettis. Hey, Mark Donettis, how are you? All right. Hey, will you do me a favor, Ann? Can you open this seasoning so I don't have to touch it with my meat hands? I think you can. Sorry, I'll hold a, it. There's a dog down here. I don't want to step on him. We have a lot of occupational hazards going down in this place. All right. So look at this. We're just going to hit a little bit of seasoning. You can do salt, pepper, whatever you want, but I want to get a little bit of seasoning onto this mm, uh, top sirloin. Good. Yeah, just so that it has a little bit of a little start to get us going. Right? Hey, Julie Moore. All right. Hello, Julie. So we're going to go ahead and fire up the grill real quick. The key on our grill today, you guys, is we are going hot, hot, hot. Oh, and you know the most important thing? All right. It's like amateur day out here, Ann. All right. So We've got our uh, beautiful sear grate, cast iron sear grate. Uh, we've got the sear station turned on, so we're gonna let that heat up, and we probably want that in the six hot as your grill can go. Now, beef, right? Here's the beef. Here's what we did on the vegetables. You guys can see that. We've got those all set and ready to go. What we're gonna do now is... Change the gloves. We're gonna kebab them. Do what? Change the gloves. Change gloves, yep. Here you go, look at this. This is my secret weapon. We talk about skewers all the time, of the metal skewers. Um, these same handle, obviously you're not gonna handle them hot because that's uh, painful as I found out this morning. Um, but I like the metal skewers because I don't have to soak them in water. I am definitely not worried about them catching on fire uh, and they come out really, really nice. Our glaze today is, listen, this is a good glaze. Some steak sauce and a tiny bit of garlic and I may have snuck in some honey, but please don't tell anyone. I put a little bit of honey in there, but that's gonna be just an easy, simple, delicious glaze. So that is set. All right, any questions, comments, hostilities? Not, no hostilities, Nothing? no. All right, so we just left. Now, uh, one of the things everybody asks is, do you wanna pack them in on there? No, I'm just letting them touch. I'm not packing them on there so hard that uh, there's no room to breathe, so to speak. any space? Nah, just, they're just like, look at, they're just touching. That's it, that's all I do. I just get them to be friends and then I move on to something happier in life. All right, and then we're doing a potato. Isn't that sweet? Very nice. And do not tell your kids, but now you've snuck the entire starch, vegetable, and everything on their plate. And I'm actually gonna load up on extra potatoes because I'm from Minnesota, I like beef and potatoes. Okay, and I line up, uh, let's do a little, here we go. All right, look at that. So that is skewer number one. Easy, fast, it didn't take us long. You, you guys, you can do all this prep the night before if you want, pop it in the fridge uh, and let it do its thing and then really just assemble skewers uh, and make your kebabs and get to grilling fast. So, get that going. And I like to, bless you, I like to make them uh, mirror it a little bit, bless you, just so I have, uh, some poetry and food, some symmetry. And also because it drives me crazy when they're not all equally as attractive. Well, you don't want any fighting kids. No fighting children. All right. No questions? Everybody's quiet again tonight, Ann. Everybody's quiet. It's hot what's out. Going on. It is hot. It is definitely hot. That is for sure. All right. So we're going to go ahead and leave those... Um, there, why don't you get a shot of those real quick? I'll put the meat over on the table. Get that out of our way real quick. So we do have a question. Yes, question. Um, what is the difference between using a metal or a wood skewer? Well, I'll tell you what, metal is going to conduct heat. So this is gonna pick up some heat and send it all the way down that skewer. So it's really gonna help us cook a little bit faster, a little bit more efficiently. But the biggest, the biggest, most important thing for me, I don't have to worry about soaking these in water. I don't have to worry about them catching on fire because you could soak them for one hour. You could soak, what's down there, the dog? A giz butt. Like, you you could soak them for an hour, you could soak them overnight, and inevitably they are always going to burn, especially when we're cooking with this guy on such a high temperature. So metal versus metal instead of wood is yeah. preferred. Yep. Definitely metal instead of wood. All right. How's it looking? How's what looking? The grill? Mm-hmm. Heat. 
we are looking good. Just trying to let that heat up a minute. And what other vegetables work well on the grill? I like, I like durable vegetables. I like hearty vegetables, right? I want to find things like uh, zucchini, yellow squash. Broccoli is good. Cauliflower is good. Onions are good. Peppers are good. Um, I'm cautious about mushrooms. Mushrooms always tend to, to split and break and just don't quite do it. So, yes. What about pineapple? Pineapple you could totally do. Yeah, just bigger chunks so that you're not, um, they're not falling apart or they're not breaking. But that works out perfect. So, all right. And stay in close on those kebabs, well, right? Well, I'm, I'm backing up a little bit because it's hot and the, it is hot. I can stay in the shade, then it doesn't cook the phone. Right, stay so. close on those kebabs though. We're doing propane swap over here. Any other questions? Uh, not yet. So again, pineapple works out fantastic. That is always a really good, a good uh, fruit to put on there. Uh, I've had people do some peaches from time to time. Peaches tend to work out really good as well. Um, so that'll work. Peaches are set. Um, I said mushrooms are good. Tomatoes don't work. Uh, peppers are always fantastic. Red, green peppers. You could use yellow or orange and go from there. All right. Get this set. And like I said, too. Um, there we go. Yep. <clears throat> when we talk... Um, versatility and adaptability. Any cut of beef is gonna work on here. You could do flank steak. Uh, that would work out fantastic. Even flat iron, but. And for those who joined us late, what kind of steak is this? So this is top sirloin. We just did a beautiful uh, choice top sirloin. Uh, and again, we've got our yellow squash, our zucchini, and our potatoes. And we are set and ready to go. Did here. We'll you give season this grill. the vegetables? <clears throat> no, I didn't, because what's gonna happen is uh, some of the seasoning from the meat's going to pick up onto the to the veggies, but then we're also going to hit them with our glaze. So we have a little bit of steak sauce on the glaze and a little bit of honey just to cut some of the steak sauce. Sometimes steak sauces can be... Uh, tangy. Uh, yeah, a little bit. That's a great word. Tangy is perfect. That is an excellent word. Uh, we're going to cut it with just a little bit of honey to bring out some of the sweetness in the beef. All right. Our, my friend Annie says hello. Annie, hi, Two Annie. Annie's on the... I like it. I like it. All right, we are waiting for the grill to get hot. So come on over and let me show you what we got. Let's get these guys on here quick. So we're just going to go over here. And like I said, we're going right onto that sear station. Get these guys going nice and hot. And we'll let it go. All right. Now, whether you're doing it in your Traeger, your Weber, your Big Green Egg, uh, you could do them in a pizza oven. You could do them on a griddle. Uh, these kebabs are really nice. It just You give them a good sear. And like we said too, metal skewers for me are absolutely the best thing ever because they conduct that heat a little bit faster uh, and better and we get into dinner much, much quicker. Question, dear. Uh, for bigger crowds, would it be better to do all meat and all veggie skewers or just to keep it together or You alternate? know what? That is an absolutely fantastic question. Um, I always look at it this way. If you have like 10 or 12 people coming over to your house, right? Uh, I, sometimes people only want a half a skewer of vegetables or a half a skewer of meat. Uh, so I think to facilitate them eating, I like to build meat, potatoes, and vegetables all on one skewer because literally it's their entire meal. Then you serve it with, you know, mashed potatoes or rice or whatever your uh, accoutrement is, a salad or whatnot. But you get them, I think you get them through the buffet line, right, a little bit faster. Um, but it's not to say either way is right or wrong. I just like to get people eating faster, and I think that does a better job of it. So, other questions? No, yeah, not yet. It's quiet. It's quiet. It's quiet, Ann. All right, we're letting the grill get rocking and rolling here. We got the sear station set. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, say hi to Tara while we're waiting. <clears throat> hi, Tara. How are you? Any uh, Anybody checking in from out of state? Anybody here from uh, another state? They're not saying where they're from, but Colin Lowe is on, Luke Scott. Colin Lowe, Luke Scott. Luke Scott's one of our ace folks. And I'll tell you what, um, <laughs> Luke Scott, every time, babe, I, I got to be honest, every time he posts pictures of his grass, it's pretty green. I mean, it's close to green. Like maybe Scott, the, like Scott Lawn stuff? I think, yeah, we, we use whatever we have. All right. You can smell these guys coming to life again. Can. Uh, just doing a really nice job. And 
it doesn't take long. It's just a few minutes. I mean, obviously, the easy part's done, right? We uh, blanched our potatoes. We cut our vegetables. We made our little assembly line. We got these guys done. And like I said, you can do it uh, the night before as well. And then don't forget, uh, when you're watching this after today, leave your questions and comments below. We always go back and answer all those questions and comments for you. And then don't forget, too, we have the recipe in the description. So you can click that recipe, print it, uh, follow along, cook along, or add that to your home stash of awesome some recipes to have but this is a good one i think this is a good recipe this for is a good one. for easy, kids we like kebabs right kebabs sure. are are easy for us so all right. right come on over babe let's check this out all right hi Corey. thanks for joining us and kylie from the iowa beef council is checking look in. at that hi kylie from iowa beef so look at this starting to get a nice little sear on these guys look at that right there oh that's so perfect so we're getting a good sear we're going to go ahead and leave it alone let that finish up. You know, we always say looking ain't cooking. So if you're wondering why your kebabs are taking forever, it's because you have the lid open and you're staring at them. So looking ain't cooking. You need to keep that lid closed, get that beautiful sear in there, let that Maillard reaction occur on the beef and then be good to go. So what other kinds of um, seasoning and sauce combinations would you recommend? You know, if you want to do an Asian style, you could do, uh, you know, a sweeter barbecue seasoning. You could do a soy sauce or hoisin glaze to kind of make them that Asian style. Uh, you could do herbs. You could marinate them in, in herbs and garlic and oil and do kind of an Italian kebab as well. Serve that on top of, uh, you know, maybe a tomato mozzarella salad. You could do um, just, yeah, there's so many possibilities. You could do straight up. Um, barbecue if you want to do it that way mm -hmm. you could smoke them for a little while and then finish them on the grill kind of that reverse sear if you will too now how um, well does this hold up if you want to eat leftovers the next day oh this is even easier i mean if you if you have enough to make you know, if you're feeding six people, make eight or nine or 10, 11, 12 kebabs if you want, uh, because all you do is wait till they're cooled, slide them off the kebab, and the next day you've got another meal. Uh, and you know, we love that cook once, eat twice. So it's fantastic to be able to make extra kebabs and then turn it into dinner the next day. So nothing? Nothing. Well, it's blue skies here again in Colorado, except that way. That's okay. So I'm hopeful that that way stays that way. and. We don't get take on. Take a little uh, rain. I'll take a little bit of rain for just a minute. All right, come on in here. Let's show them the first glaze we're going to do on these guys. So we do have a question. Yeah. Could you serve this on rice or noodles? Ooh, that's a good one. I would do more. I'm more of like uh, mashed potatoes, maybe, and rice. Um, I, I don't know. Noodles, like for me, I, it's just the way my brain's wired. Like noodles are, are either like beef stroganoff or spaghetti and meatballs. Ooh, I just beef stroganoff. That could be one that of our sounds features. good, right? So I, I don't know, I like rice. Oh, look at that. See that nice little sear we're getting on those guys? So how long um, would you leave them on before you'd put the glaze on? Um, I just want to get them, I want to get them to about medium rare uh, is what I'm looking for temperature wise. So once I get these things about where I want them, I'm going to go ahead and put that first glaze on and then we're going to let it set. So we'll close this and we'll let that glaze set for just a minute. And then we're going to rotate them and let them glaze again. Uh, probably just glaze them twice. I mean, we're 17 minutes into this and we're probably going to be done in about three minutes. So you're looking at a 20 to 21 minute time. Uh, and if you didn't have to do a propane tank swap, you might have saved a minute or two that way. So rookies, total rookies back here today. <laughs> No other questions? No questions. Come on, people, put down your beer and ask some questions. So that's a good question. What beer would it go with? I always try to pair beer to the sauce, right? Oh. So, yeah, you could pair the beer to the beef, but I really like to pair the beer to the sauce because I don't want a sweeter beer to get a tangy sauce and they throw each other off. So I try to look, you know, this is nice because, you know, that tangy might do good with like a Hefeweizen or something uh, that has some citrus notes to it or, a, uh, you know, something you're going to finish with orange or lemon just to, to, to kind of play along with that. Uh, you could do a dark beer too if you wanted. I'm uh, suddenly thirsty. I know, right? What are you thirsty for? Beer. beer? Okay. <laughs> so, babe, here, check it out. Look at, we're going to rotate these guys again. And then another thing of glaze. Yeah, we we'll do one more glaze. But I mean, look at that. These things are coming out perfect. Uh, yeah, let's not look good. Looks and they're so easy. Like I said, this is just a fast, fun, and easy process. Yeah, watch out. Oliver's on his game tonight, dropping his tennis ball behind us. I think he's trying to take us out, steal one of our uh, kebabs. If the camera goes up in the air, you'll know what happened. Right. 
And again, I just do a light coating. With the glaze, you guys, you want to do the glaze towards the end. You don't want to throw the glaze on these guys in the beginning uh, because you want to give them a chance to cook. That glaze is, because of the sugar content in glazes, you really want the glaze to finish off um, and, and glaze, not burn or char. So go ahead and shut that guy for a minute. And we're going to be uh, done pretty fast. Yeah, well, fast. before we're done, let's say uh, yeah. hello to Devin from JBS Beef. Hey, Devin, how are you, sir? And we do have a question. Um, how many kebabs do you plan per person? Ooh, it's always a good question. So I, I judge it on my audience, right? If I'm feeding, uh, you're feeding a, your family of four, uh, you know, look at how heavy of eaters. Maybe dad wants two, maybe mom wants one, maybe the kids get a half, and then you make a spare. Um, if you're feeding your, your skirts flying up, yeah. Who? Uh, <laughs> if you're feeding, you know, uh, high school kids, and they have friends over, they're going to eat a lot. Um, and I judge it too, like what you're serving it with: potatoes, uh, rice. Uh, are you having a salad? Are you having dessert? Good. Uh, yeah, dessert. Good rule of thumb for me, honest, is I plan about a skewer and a half a person, because it's usually everybody eats the first skewer. And then they come back and they want about a half of another one. Usually one and a half works out. What is this? I have no clue. It's the, it's Colorado. <laughs> it's Colorado. Okay. You ready? I am ready. Coming off the Are grill. Taking them off? Yep. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So with that metal skewer, you want to make sure you're taking you, it off yeah, with something Yeah, you definitely that's... are supporting these with, uh, taking these guys off with some tongs. Um, and it, definitely you're careful with that a little quality control on the sauce, but I mean, there you have it. We literally, let me, I, I wore a watch today so I could time. We're at about 20 minutes. And I think that's such a fantastically, uh, quick time. These are super easy. Got them all glazed. They are good to go. And again, the beauty of that metal skewer is I'm picking up a ton of heat and it carries it right through that skewer and then I'm getting a really good sear on it as well. So, hey, thank you guys so much for joining us for Friday Night with Beef. We love cooking with you. This is our 10th week cooking together. So we've been having a blast and we hope you have too. Uh, next week, we are doing uh, beef empanadas next week to get you, uh, the beef empanadas are fantastic. Talk about perfect Friday night, movie night food. Sit down with some beef empanadas and just absolutely have a blast. Don't forget, you can grab today's recipe. We've got the link in the description so you can click that, print the recipe out uh, and cook along. And then again, like we said, versatility. Pick your favorite cut of meat. We went with top sirloin, that's what the recipe called for but it is such a great cut uh, for these kebabs and then as always a, a huge thank you to all of our Colorado ranchers and producers and farmers uh, thank you guys so much for working so hard to get this amazing beef uh, in our fridges in our freezers in our bellies uh, in our homes as well so you head over to cobeef.com you can grab that recipe for tonight, uh, see all of our other recipes, and then you can download our beef locator, and it'll help you find some amazing producers that have some super quality beef. So I'm Chef Jason Morris for the Colorado Beef Council. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. We will see you next week. It is empanada time, uh, and we've got, a, yeah, it's going to be a blast. So take care of yourselves.